Hello everybody and welcome to Corel Painter Lite. This is part three in a series of videos to help you get started with Corel Painter Lite and my name is Skip Allen. Okay, so what we're looking at now is just simply the workspace. So let's review what we've done so far. We started off looking at the welcome screen and learning how to use the commands on the welcome screen. Then in the second video, we played with brushes. And the reason I did this is because I just wanted you to learn how to open up a canvas and then start playing with brushes because that's the way I wanted to learn when I started with uh, Corel Painter 12. I'm sorry, not 12, or an earlier version of Corel Painter. <laughs> Actually, it was Corel Painter 10. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to do was just, I couldn't wait to learn all this bells and whistles of the desktop. I just wanted to see what those brushes did. But there comes a time when you've got to learn uh, how to use what we refer to as the workspace. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start going over each one of these parts and we'll talk about them. Uh, the first thing that I want to bring your attention to is up here at the very top, we have the menu bar. In each one of these menus, if you click on File, you'll see that you have some commands on the menus, and you'll also have some shortcut keys. Any uh, combination of keys that are out next to the um, command will um, call up that command without you going up and clicking on File and then New. You can just say Control plus N, or in the Mac, it would be Command plus N. Now, uh, I would bring, I also want to bring your attention to the fact that, see, I can make a new document, I can open an existing document, I can uh, open a recent document. So, like the document we've been working on was that Iris Blue. So, if I click on that, I open up the recent document. That's showing you that you don't need that welcome screen because all of these other uh, items here are available. The ones that you'll use mostly will be new, open, and recent for, uh, and also printing for uh, uh, the beginning here. We'll talk about some of the other stuff if we have time. So we have file and then we have edit. Now edit is really important. Uh, under edit, you can undo or redo, that's control Z or control Y. You can fade, which means that after you've made a command, if you go directly to the fade command right away, then you can fade what you did by a certain percentage. And you probably didn't need to know that right now. <laughs> but you have cut, copy, paste, paste in place, paste the new image clear. And all of those uh, things are very helpful to you, and we'll, we'll talk about some of them as we go forward. But what I really want to bring your attention to is preferences. Now, when you click on preferences, you have four options, general, interface, performance, and brush tracking. Okay, so we're going to go to general first. We click on general. And what, what you have here, this is, these are the preferences of the way that you can set up uh, your painter for your own use. Okay, so I have general. That means I can change the brush size increments. Currently, it's at one pixel. And, and what that is saying is that as I increase the size or decrease the size of my brush, it's going to move in one pixel increments. And that's a good thing to leave. Display crosshairs to identify rubber stamp sampling source. You want to leave that. And that's uh, just when we'll get to that when we get over to the toolbar. And then notify me of available product updates. You definitely want to have that there because there are updates that happen from time to time with any software. And this will let you know when there is an update available to you. Next is the interface. Um, now, this is kind of important. I, I'm using pixels for my units because that's I'm comfortable with that. But you can click on the down arrow and you can change the units that Painter works with uh, to inches or uh, points or pikers or columns or anything that's there. The background color is this color out here. The background color in the document window uh, that's the background, you know, behind the actual painting. You can change that as well by just clicking on it 
that will bring up our color panel and we can go in and click any one of these colors or click in here and move the slider up and down the color that you are currently selecting will show in here it shows a solid color so if I come over here and click in the yellow if I bring it down toward the greens uh, it'll get greener if I kind of come straight down you'll see you get a grayed version of uh, the color okay so uh, we're going to cancel that we don't want to change the background color and the default view is window that is because I like for the window uh, to the document window to not go all the way out uh, through, uh, you know, to open completely uh, and cover the whole workspace area. If you would like that, click on full screen. Okay, now we're going to go to performance. Now this is really, really um, important for you, but you probably in the beginning you might just stay with what you have here. For instance, right now it is telling me that my memory use is, is at 70%. It tells me the number of cores that Painter can use is 8. I actually have 12. And whatever number of cores you have, usually what this does is it will open up to one less than that core. So if you only have two cores, you'll probably open up with one core. If you've got four, you'll probably open with, with three. Uh, but anyway, these two things determine how well Painter Lite works uh, with your computer and the possibility of other programs uh, running at the same time. Uh, more than likely, though, you're not going to have too much trouble. I think I would just accept whatever the uh, default is here. Now, down here you have a scratch drive. Uh, it's going to be automatically to see. That's probably all you need to know right now. And then you have undo levels. Remember Control Z, or I may not have mentioned it, but Control Z or undo, you have the option of going back 32 times. In other words, I can undo 32 separate brush strokes. So it's kind of like erasing without having to use the eraser. It's a wonderful function. Now, I would not recommend going any higher than 32. And if you have memory problems with your computer, you might want to drop it down to less than 32. Now, the view options, smooth objects when zooming and increased screen drawing speed when zoomed out. Those are really uh, nice viewing options. I would recommend keeping those. Okay, so that's all the thing we all that we can do with our preferences, and I'm just going to cancel because I didn't really change anything. Okay, now when we go back up here to edit and preferences, we have another object here called brush tracking. Now this is extremely important. What I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to delete this image and come up to new. And I will open that same canvas cotton, which is 1,000 by 1,000 by 100 pixels. We'll open that up. And now I have something to paint on. OK, so the next thing I want to do is I want to go to, let me think what brush might be good to use here. Let's try, uh, let's go to pins. And we have thick and thin pen, so I'm going to select the thick and thin pen. It's at about 2.7. Uh, and I'll bring the color down to black. And let's see how this looks at the moment. I'm going to switch. Uh, OK, so let's see what this looks like. Yeah, you see how I'm getting a thick and thin line? That is, to get that, you have to have your pressure setting or your pressure sensitivity setting for your Wacom correct. And the way you do that in Painter is you come up here to Edit, and you go to Preferences, Brush Tracking. Now, what you want to do is on the scratch pad, just 
make a mark all the way down through the scratch pad. And that will change these scales down here for your velocity scale, your velocity power, your pressure scale, and your pressure power. Now, you, if you're a real light painter, you know, it'll drop back like that. So if you if you really are, touch the painting, the canvas very, very lightly, you probably want to t touch it very, very lightly here as well. What I find, though, is most of the time the brushes respond better if you do a medium to heavy stroke and let it uh, develop however it's supposed to develop. And let's let's see how, for me, now, see this is personal to everybody, let's see how that works for me. So if I go here and do a little light stroke, and then I come back over here to, and I say, okay, and I come back over here to my brush, and I begin to paint with that brush. I'm trying. See, I can barely get the light stroke going. I, I have to touch it so light that I, I, I skip over the panel a lot. Okay, so let's go back to Edit, Preferences, Brush Tracking, and we'll do that really hard one. And I know that what I need are these two bottom lines to be all the way over. And we say, okay, now look at the difference. I can do a light line or a heavy line. So my line is, to, the light and dark of the line is determined by the uh, pressure. Control A, backspace, gets rid of it. So here we go. Let's go over that again. See there? And that's very important. Most of the brushes are um, pressure sensitive. Okay, we're going to stop this video at this point, and we'll come back uh, and look at a few more things in the next video. All righty now. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.